Hi. So if you're an Avid user and you're watching this video, odds are that you have encountered that Dolby activation problem and you want to get rid of it. In this video I'm going to teach you not how to get rid of it. It's very complicated to get rid of it. But I'm going to, to show you how to change your workflow in a way that you don't need to activate anymore. So here we are. This is Symphony, but it's pretty much the same in Media Composer. Let's start by creating a video, I'm going to, uh, uh, a new project. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Let's start with a project called Dolby Activation. As you can tell, these are the settings for 1080p, but of course, you can select any settings according to your project. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go into the project. Now, I'm sorry if it looks a little crammed, but you know that Avid is supposed to run on full screen, and I'm recording this, and it's complicated. Okay, so I'm going to get my video window up. Okay, so I have one source file right here. We're going to watch it real quick. It's just basically a little town in Washington State. Okay, so you can tell that it's short and sweet, and it's an HD. It's from my HD camera. You want to watch it again? It's very simple. It's just people walking in this town in Washington State called Polspo. Very beautiful town. So, what happens is when you try to import this video, let's try to import it using the right click. So, let's go to libraries, videos, and we're going to go to source files. There it is. Make sure that everything is properly placed according to your settings for your project. I'm going to render it to uh, my C drive. When I try to open it, so um, you might get this error message, confirm Dolby AC3 activation, um, might say that Dolby AC3 is not activated. There's a bunch of problems you can run into, but basically the idea is that it won't let you do it. So how to get over this. All right. So there's a bunch of programs out there that will actually convert video without losing almost any quality, if any at all. The one I love and I highly recommend, it's not free. It's not free, but this is something you definitely want to buy or you want to get somehow. So this is TMPG encoder. In this case, uh, I think there's a new version out, TMPG Encoder 5. I'm using still 4, it works for me. Go to start a new project and here you're going to import any any source files that you're using. In this case we're only using one, but you can import you know as many as you want. My recommendation is that you play around with this program. It has way too many options and there's so many things you can do. Again, I need to rescale this window too so that you can see everything in it. Um, you can add effects to the to the video here, but I don't do any of that. I just want the source material. So it's a progressive file, 2997. So I just leave everything else. You can cut or edit it if you don't want to. If you don't want to encode the whole thing, you can cut it out here, which is actually pretty handy. You can add any filters, but I just leave it all of this alone. I I prefer to do my editing directly on the Avid instead of dealing with this program. But it's very good to have if you're doing something quick. So it's just six seconds of video. It tells you, you know, just the uh, summary of the file. I'm going to click on format. And here's here's the thing. See, I already have my, my custom templates. Uh, you're going to go to uh, QuickTime MOV file output. And you're going to click select. And it's going to give you all these options. Now you're going to leave everything the same, the same aspect ratio. You're going to leave all of this the same, 2997 progressive. Make sure you don't change any settings from your actual project. So if you do, you're going to have a bad time. I usually leave the audio alone, although you can use a certain codec. But just by transcoding it, it will get rid, it will get rid of that Dolby information that is bugging us. And here's the important part for video codec, I mean codec, sorry you are going to choose any of the AVIDs. 
but it depends on the project you have it. I mean, if you, like in this case, I'm doing HD, so I have to choose this one, right? And then I have a 1080p. So in my case, and this is going to be different from person to person, I know that you might just want to copy exactly what I've got. This are the settings for my project, but they're very specific to my project. They might be different for you. Maybe you're using 1080i, which is probably the most common one, in at least in the United States. 1080i, and you might be using, I don't know, 24 frames, whatever. It really depends on what each person is using, okay? Maybe you are in Europe and you are uh, doing uh, PAL, so it's 2397. So select the one according to your project. I leave all of this alone. 709, no alpha, and millions of colors. Click OK. So that's for my project. Those are the settings for my project. You go to encode. Oh, by the way, if you insert here several videos and you wanted to output in just one big hefty file you're going to change this into all clips into one file and if you want them to keep uh, separate just click on output each clip in a separate file since we're just doing one it doesn't really matter there's no difference now for the encode part I have a file here called AMA and I'm gonna explain why I, I send it to the AMA Basically, this thing is going to encode really quickly because it's only six seconds. Basically, what it's doing is that it's converting it to a file that Avid understands and likes. So it's converting it to an Avid codec. So it's done. Depending on your computer is how fast this will go, but in my experience, it is pretty fast. So you shouldn't worry about it. Okay, so it's done. We can get rid of this now, actually. We can... Oh, and you can you can do batch render and all that sort of stuff. If you have like a bunch of files that you need imported, you can just do batch and leave it alone. You really have to explore this tool. I'm not going to, um, you know, take the time to do it in this video. So let's get rid of this. And if you go back to my videos, remember that we exported it to AMA. Now you see Pulsebow Washington. It retains the original file .mov. But here's the beauty. There's two things you can do. The first one is, again, imported directly into here. And if I do that, it's going to do fast import, which basically means it's just going to copy it. Did you see how fast that was? I'm not pausing the video. That's what it did. And there it is. This is six seconds, so it was pretty fast. When you have big files, something you can actually do is that since it's already in an Avid format, you can use this very nice tool link to AMA file and of course not from the source files but from the AMA and we click open now what this is going to do it doesn't matter how big your file is it's not really importing it into Avid it's just linking to it you can there's gonna be no difference because it's the same thing as importing it now what's the beauty of this the beauty of this is that you can actually not have to re-import the whole thing again because even though you're doing fast import it still takes a little bit for big files but in this case it's just going to link it and that makes it really really fast and super nice to be working on a file like that what about what is a problem with it well the problem is that you're gonna have to be careful not to destroy this file because if you destroy this file the link is going to get destroyed I mean this is a link to this file so if you get rid of this file, then that's it. You're done. You cannot, you cannot get it back. And one of the things about Avid is that it has great tools to restore lost files. So it, it's really up to you if you want to just link or if you want to import. In my opinion, if, if it's only a quick project, which is just going to take a couple of hours, maybe two or three hours, or maybe just you know one day, and then you're going to be done. Nothing's going to be done to it then by all means link it because you're, you're just going to do it quickly but if it's a project that's going to take a long time and you're actually afraid someone might mess with this or uh, you're sharing a, a, a computer or something like that then definitely do import it and that way this will be sent to um, 
to C colon Avid, and you know where Avid stores all all its files. So that's it. And of course, it doesn't ask for Dolby and the audio. I, I can't show you. Let's see. Control one. Uh, I just wanted to show you that the audio is working. Well, there it is. And if it looks um, choppy, it's because I've got, um, you know, my, my video card is being overrun right now by uh, Camtasia that I'm using to capture this, and is being overrun by, you know, all the things I have in the background. Uh, one final note about this, um, two final notes. This is not the only program that you can use to do this. There's a lot of free programs out there. The only reason I use this one is because it's, I definitely recommend that you get it. Um, it's not free but it works wonderfully like even when you're done here and you want to send it to a DVD authoring or Blu-ray authoring you can use this program to do all that or even if you want to convert it to YouTube because you want to upload something to YouTube wonderful or to Facebook it gives you so many options of course almost always I use the um, AVA AVI I mean AVI formats um, it's a very good compression. And a final note is that if you are on a computer that does not have Avid or Symphony installed on it and you have to do your converting in another computer, you are going to have to download the Avid Codex. I think, you know, that goes without saying. I would imagine that goes without saying, but some people just don't get it. Um, if your computer has Avid installed in it, you're not going to use this. Um, any program you use is going to see those codecs and try to use them. But if you're converting in another computer and then importing it into another computer, which happens sometimes, you're going to have to download and install the Avid codecs so that your converter knows what it's doing. And that way, it's not a pretty fix, but once you get used to it, you, can, you don't even think about it. It works, and it's worked for me. So I hoped... I hope that I helped you. And if not, you know, if you if you know actually of a way to get rid of that annoying Dolby activation thing, um, let me know because it's really really annoying. All right.